Assalamualaikum and hello all. I am Zahiruddin Fitri, Deputy Director, E-Learning Innovation and Technology at EDEC, the University's Teaching and Learning Center. I am also the Senior Lecturer at the Department of Building Surveying, Faculty of Built Environment. At EDEC, we support and provide pedagogical training for lecturers to enable them to design and facilitate your learning effectively. As well as, we act as the owner of Spectrum, the university's LMS or learning management system. You will find that lecturers in UM practices blended learning, which means that your learning is designed to be a mixture of face-to-face -face session in classrooms or real-time online session through Microsoft Teams and Google Meet with e-learning activities and resources available mainly in Spectrum or other Web 2.0 tools for education. In this session, we will introduce to you the important aspects of learning in UM. Focusing on Spectrum as the main LMS, as well as other supplementary technology assisted learning applications that we utilize heavily in UM, such as the Microsoft Suite for Education and Google Meet. I will address a few common questions that we receive from students and share a few tips on successful learning at university level. Dr. Yazid, who is the head of e-learning, will be speaking to you about using Spectrum for learning the university's new e-proctoring application, Respondus Lockdown Browser and Respondus Monitor, and how to request for technical support through the help desk. Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. I'm uh, Dr. Yazid Ahmad. Currently, I serve as Head of e-learning unit at EDAC here. I am also serving as Senior Lecturer at Department of Biomedical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering. Uh, University of Malaya. I would like to congratulate all of you for being here as a uh, University of Malaya student. Welcome to University of Malaya. I will brief and guide you on the following items. First, I will give an introduction on e-learning unit and an introduction to our official learning management system called Spectrum. Afterwards, I will show a demo how to use Spectrum. I will then jump to the next item, which is Respondus Proctoring. Uh, it is a system which students will use for online exam. Next, I will also guide you on how to resolve Spectrum related issues using UM Online Help Desk system. Now, let's start with e-learning unit and our e-learning management system uh, spectrum. The e-learning unit at EDAC is in charge of managing trainings to the lecturers, mainly how to use the spectrum and also uh, to train them using other e-learning tools such as Dropbox, Kahoot, Socrative, Mentimeter, Padded and etc. Students will be guided by the lecturer during the class session on how to use some of these tools depending on the class preference. All these are important to engage students and ensure effective and attractive teaching and learning experience to our students. Other than that, the e-learning unit is also in charge in managing the, the uh, learning management system, Spectrum. Um, on top of that, advise the university management on the trend of e-learning that are happening out there. Advise on procurement of e-learning tools and help inspire our educators. Let me further describe what the Spectrum is. As mentioned before, it is our official learning management system. The acronym uh, Spectrum comes from Student Powered E-Collaboration, Transforming UM, in short, Spectrum. The platform is maintained by Pusat Technology Malumat UM, PTM. As a student, in this platform, you will see the course contents, activities, and some continuous assessment uh, posted by your lecturer. 
It is a one-stop center for students to view the lecture notes, recorded videos, quizzes, assignments, questions, assignment submissions, link, forum to discussion, and etc. Depending on course instructor, you may get feedback on your continuous assessment from this platform as well. From now on, this platform should be included as part of your favorite site that must be visited every day, or I would say it should be your second Facebook. We will see further details in a Spectrum demo afterwards. First thing, you need to uh, go to the uh, Spectrum address, which is spectrum.um.edu.my, or you may simply search Spectrum UM using your favorite um, search engine. When you hit that, let's say I haven't logged in, so you will be arriving to this uh, landing page. In this landing page, you will see the uh, announcement and also uh, updated information uh, pertaining to the teaching and learning, especially especially related to the spectrum. Um, you may also use uh, a model mobile, which can be downloaded into your device so that you can access uh, using your uh, smartphone and so on. But for the purpose of training today, I will be using the web-based uh, spectrum. Now, to log in, you just go here, log in, and then uh, use the um, your Siswa mail ID and password. Once you log in, you will see a list of courses that you have enrolled. Remember, you need to make sure you have enrolled for uh, certain courses. Only then you'll be able to see uh, the list of courses here. Uh, if you're not seeing this uh, menu, you need to uh, click this burger button. Then you will see the menu. And then at the top here, you can see uh, frequency ask question related to spectrum. Uh, please have a look. And if you have an uh, issue, you might uh, hit this help desk support to lodge the uh, report. Um, now, let's see uh, what uh, you can see when you log in to the uh, certain course page. Normally, the uh, course that you have enrolled uh, will be listed here. And then it begins with the uh, course code. At the front is your course code and then followed by the name of the course. And also it will show the uh, session as well as the semester and also in which group uh, you are in. Down below, for each course, you will see the list of instructor. For this course, for example, there's only one instructor. That's why only one instructor name uh, appear there. If you have uh, multiple instructor, then there will be uh, multiple instructor name listed down there. Now, let's see uh, one course. Oh, by the way, if you're not able to see a uh, course here, you might want to use this uh, function, fetch from Maya. Um, by right, when you just registered for a course, it will take uh, some time for the course to appear in the spectrum. If you want to see it immediately, you might want to use uh, this uh, fetch from Maya. All right. Uh, you click on that and then you will be able to see, uh, you just follow the on-screen instruction. Now, let's say uh, we you have a course already. So I'm going to jump to this course, KIB3011. Right, for each course, you will see uh, the content uh, related to the course. Normally at the top, you will see the announcement, the general course information. Um, and uh, including the uh, link to the attendance. And sometimes the lecturer will give you a QR code. You just scan the QR code, QR code and then you um, automate, it will automatically mark your attendance. Um, 
within the uh, course page if you would like to go to the uh, course page you can let's say you have somehow goes inside you want to go back to the front page of the course just click to this uh, code within the course page you can see uh, the uh, learning material uh, for example the these are the learning material so according uh, depends on your your lecturer uh, for this course it arranged according to week so you can see week one week two week three and so on so before starting the class it, it is advisable for you to read through the lecture notes so that you know what's going on during the lecture and maybe the uh, during face-to-face -face session you can have a discussion with your instructor so to access the file, you just click on the uh, link. You can uh, download uh, the file. Uh, for this uh, browser, you might, might uh, use this uh, uh, download menu, download uh, option to download uh, into your device. Let me go back. Um, the it might have the PDF file, you can have the uh, PPT file and so on. And in this course, uh, uh, sometimes you might, uh, the instructor might uh, upload the lecture notes in, in form of video as well. So you might uh, view the uh, recorded video. Um, so those are the uh, materials. All right. Uh, another thing that might uh, you might get from this uh, uh, course page is the questions related to the uh, assessment, uh, especially continuous assessment. The uh, assignment question or project will be uh, posted here. And also you will, uh, the instructor might want you to submit the uh, answer there as well. Uh, I mean, your answer you can uh, submit there as well. So this is where, this is how you can submit the answer. Let me go back to the front page and then I go to the specific uh, assignment. Let me go to the assignment. So we have this assignment. Uh, you may view the question and then uh, once you completed uh, when you want to submit, just click on that link and then you can uh, submit your answer. Let me turn to this uh, student mode so that I can show how to submit. Right, you click add submission, then uh, you can submit. So you can use this uh, file picker to uh, select your, your file or you may simply drag and drop your uh, file here from your browser, right? And then save changes and then submit. Um, you might uh, be uh, seeing other activities as well, such as uh, um, forum. Uh, for example, let me open uh, this course. Um, so discussion, this is class activity. It can be in the form of uh, discussion, uh, forum discussion. You might uh, add a certain topic here and then uh, put your message, what you want to say about the uh, topic and then submit. You might also uh, upload uh, certain files um, if you want to share with the, uh, the uh, class uh, member and then post to forum. Um, let me go to the front page here. I'm, I'm switching to TLJ. This is another course. Um, you might, uh, the instructor might uh, have class activity in, in form of quiz as well. So this is quiz. Um, I need to turn to student. So that I can show you how student will see it. So once you click the quiz, let me go back here, TLG, and then go to quiz. 
All right, this is quiz. Um, you attempt the quiz and then um, answer the, the question. Let's say I simply put, uh, in this case, I have only two questions and then after that, you can submit the uh, answer. Submit and finish. Submit and finish. So it depends on the configuration. Uh, the instructor will tell you whether you can have multiple attempts, a single attempt and so on. Um, so uh, what else? Uh, I think um, pretty much I've covered uh, most of the important thing for the for you to assess the spectrum. So uh, again, the spectrum uh, provide you uh, a way uh, you know, for the student uh, to see the course content, um, the, the course content uploaded by your instructor. And also within the uh, spectrum, you will be able to see the activities uh, involved in uh, activities and also the uh, uh, assessment. In this session, I'm going to show you how you can use the Office 365 suite, productivity suite that comes with your studentship at the university. You are free to use this account throughout the duration of your studies in the university and do use it for teaching and learning purposes as well as other activities that you might have. To get you started with the use of your Office 365 suite, you first need to make sure that you have activated your Siswamil and also you have used for the first time or logged in for the first time to the Spectrum account. So your Spectrum account needs to be logged in at least once before the Office 365 account will be available to you. So let's walk you through the sign-in process for your Office 365 account. Your Office 365 account can be accessed by going to office.com and when you are presented with this, this window here, go ahead and sign in as a user. Okay, so as a student user, your Office 365 account will have a SISWA 365 that uh, domain attached to it, something like this. And the username will be your UM mail username. Don't worry about the password because the password will be the same as your UM mail password. And you can enter your password here. So a bit of uh, advice or a tip to make sure that you have got the right address is once you have put in your username and the domain name properly, you will see a DTC background at the back. Then it shows that you have logged in to the right account. So go ahead and enter your UM mail password or SysFormail password now. Once you have logged in to your Siswa, uh, Siswa 365 account, you will be presented with a page similar to this. Okay, I am using the dark mode, so that's why it sees you. You see, uh, it's black background, but most probably your account would come with uh, the the light mode, where you will see a back, white background. Other than that, all the functionalities will be the same. So on the left-hand side here, 
you would see the normal Office 365 Word, Excel and PowerPoint that you would use quite extensively. On the top right hand side is the option to install Office 365 into your computer. So bear in mind, this Office 365 is an original account and you have five licenses that you can use so that means you can install office 365 365 with your account to five different computers the office 365 also comes with one terabyte of hard drive and you can use this one terabyte to store any files that you created online and also you can use it to back up your computer one terabyte is actually a very very big storage capacity another thing that you would find that you uh, might be using quite often is the office 365 Microsoft Teams account. So if you go to the left hand side of your screen, you will see this Microsoft Teams icon. When I click here, the Teams, Microsoft Teams page will appear. So Microsoft Teams comes in two forms. The first one is the desktop form, which you can download with your Office 365 account. And this another one, which is a browser form where you can use it when you use the browser with the use of a browser. In Microsoft Teams, you will most likely be able to find the themes for your classes like this one and this one which are the classes that i teach or you can even join or create a team of your own for example for student clubs or for any other activities that you might want to do so let's look at a typical class teams that you would find your lecturers using with you in your studies. So normally in the student or class teams, you would find things like posts where your lecturers will use it for communication much like the use of WhatsApp or Telegram for communication. And then you also have files where the files for assignments or for group work can be created and stored in the Microsoft Teams itself. And you might find other resources given by your lecturers so in in here you you can find that there is a assignments grades and also channels so different channels that's created by uh, your lecturers to create a file in microsoft teams what you do is just click on new and you will find that you can create a folder or any of the different files that's mentioned here. Word document, Excel workbook, PowerPoint presentation, one, more note, one note, notebook, and also forms for Excel. You would find that when you create a Word document, that document 
created in the class teams will be accessible for everybody in the class team. So the advantage in here is that you can actually work on a single document together with all your classmates. So and everything and everything is updated in real time using the internet. So everything that you do, everything that you type will actually appear in your friends or your classmates Word online document in Microsoft Teams as well. Let's go back to our Teams just now. So in the post, what your lecturers can do is to schedule a class meet. So in a hybrid class, the online classes would normally be conducted over Microsoft Teams. It can also be conducted over Google Meet. So depending on what your lecturers might prefer. But do have a conversation with your lecturer to determine which platform would be most convenient and also uh, most useful to both parties, students and also lecturers. The good thing about scheduling a class on Microsoft Teams is that you can actually get the lecturers or your lecturers will be able to record the meeting in Microsoft Teams and at the end of the session, the meeting will be available to you in Microsoft Teams. So the good thing about this is that everything will be stored in one place. And it has an advantage where you will be able to get to them much quicker. So compare that with recording in Google Meet. You need to actually find the recording and it needs to be um, stored somewhere. So that's the advantage of having your classes, on, uh, online classes conducted and recorded in uh, Microsoft Teams. The post in Microsoft Teams will actually appear in your phone, can actually appear in your phone. What you should do or what you need to do is to download Microsoft Teams app to your phone. What this, what this does is all the posts that's created, all the chat that is created will actually appear as notifications like what you have with WhatsApp and also uh, Telegram. Apart from giving you assignments and work in Spectrum, your lecturers might also give you assignments, graded assignments in your Microsoft Teams. So every time that your lecturer give you assignments in Microsoft Teams, you can actually look at it by clicking on the assignments tab and you will see any assignment that is uh, given to you as a student. Please make sure that the assignments are completed before you hand the assignment in. You can actually use Microsoft Teams to create a group or a club for yourself and your friends at the university. So let's go to the main page of Teams and let's create a team. So to create a team, 
you can actually click on create team and you can choose for example clubs as a team so here you can give your teams a name and also a description and also the privacy settings either it's a private or uh, an open group that or a public group that you want anybody to join after you've given the name then you can actually create the team your lecturer might ask you to join a team with a code so a six digit code that's given by your lecturer can be entered in here and by using the code given by your lecturer you can also join the team by putting in the code and click on join team and you will automatically be admitted to the class team by your lecturers or a club team that's created by your friends i think that's all a short introduction and guidance on using uh, microsoft teams with your university malaya account um in case uh, the university uh, is going to um uh, ask student to perform online examination online exam um the student uh, might be uh, instructed to use the uh, spectrum exam it is uh, another platform uh, created by Institute of malaya uh, for student to uh, take up the uh, uh, exam the appearance is more or uh, less uh, similar like the teaching and learning uh, spectrum remember i uh, described uh, the spectrum uh, platform which is a uh, learning management in the spectrum platform it contains all the uh, uh, teaching materials uploaded by your instructor um, as the spectrum exam which runs along with it, the, the responders uh, proctoring system it is a platform for students to take up the final exam final exam so let's have a look how the spectrum exam is like um let me open the spectrum exam so it is exactly like uh, uh seem like the previous uh spectrum but with the extension of exam at the back so it is spectrum exam that you have to do my once you hit that address it will be directed to this front page let me go you know out so that you see the front page so this is front page of the spectrum exam in this uh, front page or i would say landing page you will see again the announcement and the uh, resources related to the um, uh, proctoring tool that uh, um subscribe to which is responders right um, introduction video you can uh, spend your time to uh, see this video um, you, again you just type in spectrum exam and you will be able to uh, be directed to this page all right uh, seem like this spectrum you can use your uh, CISWA mail credential to log in to this page all right the username and password sign in let me switch my role to student so that I can show what students see when they log in. So again, you will see a list of the courses that you have registered. Remember, if you are not yet registered, you might not be able to see uh, the course yet. So wait until you have a uh, course registered in Maya platform. Only then you will be able to see the, the course. All right. Uh, once you log in, um, by default the ptm uh, set uh, each of the student will be, will be able to see this e proctoring 
uh, this is the um, dummy um, course uh, created for student to experience the uh, responder system. All right, I'll allow me to open this uh, slide, which I use to uh, um, guide student while uh, having the um, responders uh, uh, session, tra training session with student. Um, again, the uh, it is an online examination monitoring system based on uh, it has AI within it that allow the system to automatically uh, flag if there's any suspicious uh, behavior uh, attempted by the student. For example, uh, if the student suddenly missing from the screen, so at the end, the, the lecturer have to view the recorded video. Uh, and then the lecturer will make decision whether it is a genuinely um, case or, or, or whatnot. So, all right, the uh, responders have two things. One is lockdown browser and the other one is responders monitor. The student will be um, using a lockdown browser when they're taking up the uh, quiz. Um, like what I mentioned in uh, Spectrum uh, introduction, uh, I did uh, indicate that uh, there is a quiz module, right? So here the same quiz module will be used by instructor, but when the quiz module is set to work with a uh, responder system, the this, this page, what the student will be seeing, uh, let me open to that. So instead of a uh, simple attempt, the student will have to uh, log in using the um, lockdown browser. So let me zoom in. So first thing, if you uh, first time using it, you need to download and install and then do the test and then launch the uh, lockdown browser so that you can take up the quiz. While taking up the quiz, there are two things happening. One the student will be using this browser, lockdown browser. And at the same time, the uh, camera and mic will be used to capture the student who are currently uh, taking the exam. So in the lockdown browser, student will not able to navigate away from the page. Um, it will be restricted um, to the uh, uh, question uh, displayed on the screen. Um, student can uh, answer uh, in the uh, provided space or depends on the uh, preference by instructor. It, they might uh, have a student answered in the um, uh, uh, empty page. I mean, on using a pen and pencil. At the end, uh, of the uh, session, uh, the instructor will be able to view the student who are taking up the uh, exam. So let's see, uh, in uh, as a student, what you will be experiencing. So first thing, you will be logging to the page, Spectrum exam, and then uh, go to the specific uh, course, and then uh, click on the uh, uh, exam uh, link or quiz link um, assigned for that uh, uh, course. And then you will be seeing this page. Again, I zoom in. So it is important for you to have a dry run so that the lockdown browser is installed on your machine so that when it's time to uh, take up the exam. You don't have to download and install it again. All right. So you just simply click launch the lockdown browser and proceed. A few things that uh, will happen when you first uh, run the lockdown browser. Uh, there will be uh, background processes that need to be uh, terminated. All right. So for example, if you have installed the uh, Google Chrome remote desktop, the responders um, lockdown browser will detect it as a, a program that need to be turned off. So you need to turn off. 
for this case, it, you need to use a task manager to turn off that uh, process. Uh, there are many ways to turn on the task manager. One is control, turn and delete, or you can simply right click on them and then uh, click on task manager and then uh, go to details and find the process that need to be turned off. All right. Um, always turn off if there are two process, for example, this one remote host, the same process, but one belongs to the system in another one local uh, uh, local, you just terminate the uh, system and then automatically the second one will be uh, terminated. So there are uh, a background process that can be uh, closed down by the responders pop up menu, uh, pop up window uh, by simply click on the close process. If that is the case, then simply click on close process. You don't have to go to the task manager to close the process, right? Um, Next, uh, let me make it bigger here. Um, what, after, um, after finishing this process, then you will uh, go to this um, second step, uh, the um, authentication uh, in terms of um, webcam check, um, looking at the additional instruction and so on. So those are the things that uh, students have to go through um, for each of the uh, online exam quiz. Online exam, which using the quiz module. Um, if somehow you are experiencing a problem, you can uh, use this uh, help link. Uh, it is not working. You click on that, then there will be a uh, guide uh, that you can follow along. In case if this is still does not help you, you can reach the um, uh, responders uh, support uh, 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 live chat, uh, which are available 24 7 uh, support for students. Um, and of course, if it is related to the uh, uh, not the system, the, the, if this somehow not able to be resolved, then you need to communicate with your lecturer via WhatsApp or any uh, medium um, that uh, uh, has been uh, mentioned by your lecturer. All right. Um, so uh, in this process, it involves um, uh, capturing your uh, video. Uh, which test the functionality of audio and video, uh, I mean the camera as well as the mic. And um, you need to take up the photo um, simply using the camera and then show the ID and then uh, show the uh, environment of which you are taking the exam. So all this depends on the uh, setting by the lecturer. And lastly, uh, there will be face detection. I like to highlight the face de detection features here is just to uh, detect whether there's any human face in front of the uh, camera or not. So if somehow the detection is not uh, that clear, then you will see this thumbs down uh, icon um, triggered. If all okay, then you have the thumb screen up. Now at the end, uh, just want to share with student, the lecturer will be able to see uh, each of the uh, students, uh, the, the recorded video. Only the instructor will be able to see the, the video, so uh, not all are able to see it. Um, so, uh, and the uh, instructor will be able to see um, the student name list and the priority. Um, it has high, medium, and low. What the priority means? It means that those with high priority, that means you have a very uh, high number of uh, triggered event. So if you disappear from the screen many, many times, then uh, those many, many times is, is uh, accumulated. If within the class you have the highest number of uh, disappearance, then you will be uh, ranked as high. So. So uh, remember uh, your activities uh, while taking up the 
um, uh, online exam is being watched by the uh, responder system. All right. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you very much. I will now answer some of the common questions that we normally receive from students regarding spectrum usage issues. These questions are based on the analysis of the most popular questions that we gathered from the help desk request. You may find the detailed FAQ by going to the top left hand corner of your spectrum page. When your registered course or courses doesn't appear in Spectrum, normally it suggests that there might be issues with your student registration status. Spectrum is an integra integrated university application system comprising student registration, class scheduling, human resource management, and center authentication system. The Spectrum platform reads the data from all these applications and any issues from any of them will affect what students see in Spectrum. So I suggest you report the issue to your faculty office so that they could check and verify your registration status. Students who have successfully completed their registration and confirmed their courses in Maya should have all courses appear in the Spectrum page. The profile data on Spectrum is read from the central registration system for staff and students. To request for profile update, please report to BSM for academic staff and faculty office for students. There are many ways for your lecturers to capture your attendance in online class sessions. They have the option to use the Spectrum attendance module or to use any activity completion record such as answering quizzes, responding to surveys, submission of work or other activities that can capture and record identity and timestamps. After registration in Maya, you should wait 24 hours for the registration to be synchronized with Spectrum so that the registered course will start to appear there. However, we have introduced the Spectrum Fetch from Maya button on your Spectrum page. And what this does is it will automatically sync the Maya update to your Spectrum page so that your course will appear right away. Let's see what you can do before uh, putting up the help desk uh, support request. You might see uh, FAQ right over here. Um, see if some of this uh, FAQ related to your problem. If there is, then you might able to find the solution there. If this somehow does not resolve the problem, you can uh, go to this link, help desk. All right. You can either using that uh, link or you can simply type in on the uh, address bar, help desk.um.edu.my. So we'll be directed to this page. If you're not yet logged in, uh, please make sure you log in. Use the uh, Siswa mail uh, credential, username and password. And to launch uh, a request for help desk, uh, click this this one, and then you see if you have created uh, previous uh, request, it will be listed down here. To create a new one, uh, you need to hit that button. Okay. Um, for the problem related to the uh, spectrum, 
uh, the way you can lodge report, you need to choose uh, Pusat Teknologi Maklumat because the system is actually maintained by PTM. So click on that. And then under pro problem category, choose application system. And then problem type, we choose spectrum. It is located down below here. Okay. Uh, remember, if it is related to the cause not appear in the spectrum, it is most likely due to the uh, cause not yet uh, uh, registered in the Maya system. If that is the case, then you need to uh, choose Maya, Maya system. All right. If you are sure it is related to spectrum, then you can choose spectrum. And then let me choose spectrum. As oops, spectrum. And then uh, you can type in the uh, description, problem details, uh, include your phone number, program location, and include the snapshot of the problem. And then hit submit. All right. Uh, I think that's all. All right, by the way, you can check the status of the uh, request by again hitting that uh, link and then you see the, 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 pro uh, the, the progress. Um, for example, you can see the complaint details, who are the, per uh, the, the, the person who are taking care of your uh, request. All right. So, hope this helped. Thank you very much. Hope you have gained sufficient knowledge that have been presented in this briefing session. Uh, this knowledge is important to ensure you are having smooth sailing towards completion of your study in University Malaya. You may get more information related to edX by visiting our website at edX.um.edu.my or you may scan the QR code presented on the screen. In at that website, you may find links to our social media such as YouTube channel, uh, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.